In the 1950s, scientists began noting the ability of certain weeds to survive herbicide doses that typically killed similar plants. By 1975, the number of weed types identified as being resistant to particular herbicides had begun increasing worldwide by an average of 11 cases per year. The United States faces the greatest battle with resistant weeds, followed by Europe and Australia. Unless we start doing things differently, there's going to be the day rather quickly on larger and larger percentage of acres where we don't have herbicide options, and that's going to be a very scary situation. The problem, which once seemed like a distant threat to many, is now forcing farmers in some regions to hire crews to hoe, cut, or pull the weeds, a practice largely abandoned 20 years ago. You'll go through a field and cut them out, and then in two weeks you'll see some more that's popped up, and we go back and get those again. Because each one that goes to seed is several thousand seeds that will be resistant that you'll deal with the next year. Experts agree the problem of resistant weeds ballooned with the expanded use of glyphosate herbicide. Introduced by Monsanto in 1974 under the brand name Roundup. The company's genetically engineered Roundup Ready crops, the first of which were released in 1996, tolerated glyphosate treatment. Farmers rapidly and widely embraced both. It changed our lifestyle as far as farming. Uh, weed control was so easy. Uh, it wasn't a nightmare anymore, and we had less hand chopping and things like that, and it was just very good product. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, herbicide-tolerant crops now account for 94% of U.S. soybean acres and 89% of cotton and corn acres. As we use products more and more over time, the potential to develop resistance is there, and so we're starting to see some challenges um, with, with some particular uh, weeds in the field. The first few years of a chemical's use may leave behind only a few resistant weeds, those with the right genetic code. Those weeds drop their seeds and become more prominent in subsequent years if the same weed killer is used repeatedly. In Arkansas and other southern states, the most problematic weed is Palmer amaranth, more commonly known as pigweed or careless weed. At first, just a few scattered stray weeds known as escapes remained in the field after herbicide was used. Around 2009, I had sent some samples off of escapes in the fields and they came back like 10 to 15 percent uh, resistant to glyphosate or Roundup. Then the next year, I sampled them in the fall um, and sampled three fields. They came back 55, 85, and 100 percent resistant. That's how much it jumped in one year's time. Hello, Billy. Texas farmer Greg Good noticed an increase in resistant careless weed in his cotton fields last fall. In this particular field, you know, I had one or two last year, and then, and then this year it, it has really exploded. Good spent many days over the past two summers weeding his fields by hand. I would spend anywhere from 30 minutes to about two hours pulling weeds. Palmer amaranth is particularly tough. Even after being cut and lying in the field, it can still develop roots and go to seed. Several northeastern Arkansas producers, including pigot farmer Mike Morgan, estimate that hiring extra help to weed their cotton and soybean fields adds up to $30 an acre, on top of the cost of alternative herbicides. But farmers like Morgan say that ignoring the weeds could mean losing a third or more in yield. It's a yearly fight for us now. We just know when we start a crop, we're going to fight uh, resistant pigweed. According to the International Survey of Herbicide-Resistant Weeds, almost 250 different plant species worldwide are resistant to one or more herbicides. Kansas, California, and Illinois top the list in the United States. In the Midwest, farmers already are facing off against tall water hemp. Southern farmers hope their peers to the north heed their warnings. 2010, I just see one, just I spotted uh, resistant pigweed just here and there in the fields, just not, not enough to really even worry with. If I'd had any idea, I'd have went right there and pulled them up, hauled them off, and throwed them in a hole and burned them like we do now a lot. Most experts agree farmers must begin using a wider range of weed control options, including alternating chemicals, rotating crops, 
and increasing tillage when appropriate. Producers also are adding cover crops or looking at equipment that crushes weed seed. Both USDA and the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign are testing the Australian-built Harrington Seed Destructor. The implement is designed to collect and crush weed seeds as they come out of a combine. And chemical companies are attacking the problem as well. What we've come to realize is that we need multiple mechanisms of action in that overall weed management system. Monsanto is seeking government approval for a new dual ingredient herbicide called Roundup Extend, which will combine glyphosate and dicamba. And last year, Dow AgroSciences gained government approval for Enlist Duo, a combination of glyphosate and 2,4-D. However, these new combinations may only buy time. And new herbicides, the last one having been created three decades ago, are unlikely to be introduced anytime soon. When we think about um, the number of companies and the number of, of new products that were explored uh, several decades ago, there was a, a lot of that going on. So a lot of that research and development has, has slowed down um, in the last few years. In Clay County, Arkansas, extension leaders and farmers set up a zero tolerance program to eliminate problem weeds from fields and nearby ditches. We had just a handful that started out with the, what I call the zero tolerance program. And then as others saw the benefit, they, uh, they, uh, they also got on board with the program and, and did the zero tolerance program, some of them by choice. Some of them realized that uh, their landlords was watching the other farmers doing a better job of cleaning up the field and looked better. Landlords liked that good clean look. Uh, and they kind of put a little pressure on them. You could call it peer pressure. Traditionally, rice producers in the area have burned stubble after harvest, but some farmers have started to use fire in many of their fields. Experts say seeing a few remaining weeds may indicate more than a faulty sprayer or drifting chemicals. And for Kegel, ignoring the problem didn't make it go away. When you figure out that you've got them, it's a mess. But if you start before you get them, it would be a lot easier. And I did that. I, I heard these stories coming from south of us, and I thought, that'll never happen to me. I don't do that. Well, it did. For Market to Market, I'm Paul Yeager.